Well, Sheridan Hills, it's good being with you tonight. We are here in our summer series that we have called The Attributes of God in Everyday Life. Every Wednesday, we're taking a few minutes to consider God in whom He is. So every week, we're looking at a different or a few different attributes of God. So we've been studying the attributes of God, but not just the attributes detached, but how they meet us in everyday life, how they affect the way we live our lives. So you may be asking, what are the attributes of God? Well, the attributes of God are the characteristics of God. The attributes of God are what make God, God. And why is it so important that we should study the attributes of God? We should study the attributes of God because we need to know who God is. They teach us the greatness of God and the goodness of God. In the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23, we read this. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man reach, bo boast in his riches. But let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me. So the Lord, through the prophet, tells us that the most important thing that we can possibly do is to know God. So we're taking our time to consider who God is, to consider his attributes and to deepen our knowledge of who he is. Last week, Pastor Andrew walked us through the holiness of God. He explained that that is uh, an attribute that, that sets God apart, right? But in a way, God invites us to share in his holiness. He explained the difference between the communicable and the uncommunicable attributes of God, those that he shares with us and those that are his alone. So today we're going to consider God in his transcendence and in his eminence. So God's transcendence simply means this. God is self-sufficient. He does not need us or anything to exist. While we needed God to create us in order for us to come into existence, God didn't need anyone to be. As a matter of fact, God has always existed. He is beyond us. He is beyond our rich. And he is beyond the created world. But the other side of this token, there is the opposite attribute of God's imminence. While God is beyond us and he is beyond our reach, it's also true that God is near. God cares. God hears us. So these two attributes often are explained together because they show the spectrum of God's greatness and his goodness. God's transcendence and imminence are often depicted side by side in the Bible. Listen to how the prophet Isaiah puts these two attributes together in Isaiah 57 verse 15. He says, For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. So this is God's transcendence. But immediately after this, he says, And also with him, I'm sorry, I dwell in the high and holy places, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. So it is both true that God inhabits the heavens, but it is true that he is close to those who are broken in heart, for those who are contrite in spirit. 
Psalm 139 verse 17 says this, How precious the, to me are, the thought, are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. So we both care about the thoughts of God, right? They matter to us, but they are too vast for us to sum them up. Ephesians 3 verse 19, Paul tells us that we should know the love of Christ that surpasses, that surpasses knowledge. In other words, Paul is telling us, know the unknowable, right? So we're both called to know God and understand that God will never be fully comprehended by the human mind. Isaiah 12, 6 says this, Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The holiness of God is the attribute that sets Him apart from us, yet God in His holiness dwells in the midst of His people. Perhaps the greatest way that we see the transcendence and the imminence of God coming together is in the person of Jesus Christ himself. In the Gospel of John, we see Jesus is both the God who is there from the beginning, but at an appointed time, he condescended and became human. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. This is referring to Christ before the Incarnation. And the word was with God and the word was God. Right? This is, a, this is a statement of Jesus' eternal deity. Jesus didn't begin being God at a point. Jesus was always God. He was with God and God from the very beginning. But then in verse 14, we see this. And the word Right? Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So in Jesus, we see the eternal God humbling himself and coming to dwell among men. The greatest expression expression humans can experience of God's imminence, of God's nearness, is the union Christians experience with Christ. When, when we come to Christ, we don't just come to be with Him, but the Bible actually says that we become partakers of the divine nature. Galatians 2 verse 20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Here is the eternal God who not only comes to dwell among men, he comes to dwell in men. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, the great hope that we have to relate to the eternally holy, transcendental God is to know Him in His most clear, imminent display through Jesus Christ. Jesus came so that we could be crucified with Him and so that He could live in us. So friends, let us know the God who transcends all things and yet bends down, condescends, and comes to dwell not just among us, but in us. So what are some ways that this doctrine of God's transcendence and imminence uh, apply to our everyday life? Let's, let's think briefly about that. God's transcendence and imminence should cause us to consider Christ. If God has drawn near to you, you do not want to ignore Him. Friend, you may, you may be listening in and you may perhaps not be a Christian. Let me, 
let me invite you to consider Christ today. God has drawn near to you. God has come to you and said, your only hope of relating to me is through my son. Come to him, confess your sins, rest wholeheartedly in him. So we should consider Christ because the eternal God has drawn near. God's transcendence and imminence should cause us to, uh, to be bold in our prayers as well. God's imminence means that He can hear our prayers. But God's transcendence also means that He can do something about it. So we pray to a God who both hears and is able to do something about our prayers. If God was just imminent, He would care, He would listen, but then he would say, but I can't do anything about it. And if God was just transcendent, he would be able to do something about it, but he wouldn't care enough to listen. But when God is able to be both imminent and transcendent, he is able to both hear and do something. God's transcendence and imminence should affect the way we view ourselves. The creator of the universe cares so much about you that he draws near to you. So friends, I don't know how you view yourself. I, I don't know if you view yourself too highly or too lowly, but the Bible calls us to view ourselves with a right perspective. And our dignity comes from the fact that God created us and is calling us to have a relationship with him. So whether we're struggling with pride or we're struggling with great depression, despondency, we can come to God and know that he cares enough to draw near to us and we can only come to him because he comes to us first. God's transcendence and imminence should impact the way we also worship the way we sing unto the lord the way we, we render him service because god is transcendent and 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 too great to even be fully understood our service our worship to him should be one of reason we should wrestle to know god know him deeply we should approach god with reverence we should approach God with fear. But because God is imminent, because he is near, we shouldn't just approach him with reason, but also with emotions. We should approach God with joy. We should approach God with assurance. He is near. God's transcendence and imminence should impact the way we behave when we're alone. Right? Here, here is a fact. We're never alone. God is always there with us. We live our lives before the presence of God. So we don't do things for eye service. We do things because we seek to honor the Lord at all times. Finally, God's transcendence and imminence should affect the way we suffer. The very verse that we read out of Isaiah says that God is near to the contrite and to the broken spirits. So when we suffer, we suffer, but not like those without hope. So perhaps you are suffering today. Perhaps you are preparing your heart for suffering. The fact that God is transcendent and imminent should cause us to suffer well. A suffering that builds faith rather than destroys it so friends let us consider the god who is both transcendent and imminent the god who is both above all things and so near that he desires to live in us through his son through the spirit of his son jesus christ so would you pray with me now Father, I pray now that Sheridan Hills Baptist Church would know 
you as you are. Father, we pray that our church would know that you inhabit the heavens. Lord, that your ways are higher than our ways and that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Lord, that with our small, frail brain, we could never fully come to you. But Lord, may Sheridan Hills also know that you are the God who hears the prayer of the sinners. Lord, you are the God who comes and transforms sinners into saints. Lord, may Sheridan Hills Baptist Church know that you are not too far, that you cannot hear our prayers. Lord, may we live in light of this. May we live in holiness. May we live, Father, in goodness. May we truly love our neighbors because we first love you. Father, may we, Lord, know that you are near when we are broken. Father, may we know the God who both transcends us, but who also dwells with us. May we always know you in that way. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, now we want to encourage you to spend some time praying with those around you, whether you are with your family, whether you're Zooming with other people, or whether you are safely gathering with others. Um, w- there are some ways that we want to encourage you to, to pray together. So here are a few ways that we would encourage you to pray together. Pray that we, as a church, will develop a greater sense of awe towards God. Pray also that we'll experience God near to us day by day, that we would know that our God is there. Also, here are some ways um, that, that you can pray specifically in the life of our church. Um, Mrs. Helen Eshelman, who has been a member of this church for many decades, over five decades, is moving away. And we want to pray for her. We want to prove, pray for her move and we want to pray that the Lord would be with her. We're praising the Lord that uh, Michaela De Sico is uh, coming to uh, uh, finalize the, the treatment that she's having to prevent uh, her brain cancer from coming back. So we can pray for that. We can praise the Lord for that and pray that the Lord will sustain her health. And we can also pray for Billy Jones. We can pray that the Lord would uh, be with him and that the Lord would, as he asks often, would glorify himself through his suffering but also pray that the Lord would heal his body. Finally, we would encourage you to ask those around you, how can I pray for you? How can we be in prayer for one another? So let's take some time now to pray for one another and to care for one another in this way. Friends, may the Lord be with you and we look forward to seeing you again next week as we gather to consider the attributes of God. May the Lord be with you.